Okay, hello there and welcome back to Building the Boys. We now have, from our friends over at Roker, the Mechanical Music Box. This is the Stagecoach. Um, they've sent us this one through to review, and um, I'm really happy about it because these are the sort of models that first got me into Roker, the kind of clockwork wind-up builds, and I've been missing them. Uh, they've done some wonderful things with fairground models of recent, where a lot more electrics have come into them, and to get that kind of movement on those fairground models is needed, but I've missed the traditional um, music boxes, and this is one of them. I can't wait. It's gorgeous as well. I mean, it's got an automatic transmission, so this thing will move, but it will also play music as well. It looks ridiculously detailed. I can't wait to get into this one and get this one built because you can see the stupid smile on the face already. Uh, these are a joy. If you get a chance to do one of these and sort of lock yourself away and get into it, the hours fly by before you realise that, you know, that's dark out. <laughs> but they're, they're so much fun. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, open this up, see what's inside the box. Um, I'm going to go through some of the stages. I'm not going to do the, show the entire build because this video would be like six hours long if it was. What we're going to do is we're going to go through different bits and we'll check in every few pages and whatnot. If I come across anything that's particularly difficult or complicated when it comes to the gears or anything like that, we'll go through it. Um, and then we'll see what this turns out like. But uh, without further ado, let's get this box open. Let's get a look at it. If you haven't yet, please remember to like and subscribe. Helps the channel massively, but let's get this built. Okay, so let's have a look at what we're dealing with here. Let's get this box open. Ah, there it is. I always love the smell of these as well, man. The smell of the wood is always so nice. Those are our boards, so all of our boards will have our different parts on them. And you can see this is the D board, so everything part on here is marked as a D. We see here, we have bees here. So it's, you know, it's simple enough. You just follow along with what boards are needed where. There are our wheels, lovely stuff. I'll pop that one out. We have our parts list. Now this is important, right? Because the amount of times I, I get messages, oh, I don't know what this is for. Well, all your parts are here. So you can see what each of these are. These are parts that aren't wooden boards. So we can see exactly what they are. The gaskets, gears, um, the screwdriver itself is listed as part, different screws, the, the uh, metal parts, the movement, it's all there. Hold on to this. So when they start referring to it, you can see exactly which piece you need. But very useful to have. We have our instructions here, which this time comes as, yeah, quite large broadsheet instructions. But you just go through. So we'll go through each stage, I think. So we'll go through stage one, stage two, and we'll check in after each stage to see where we are. So if you're building along, or need almost like a tutorial, you'll know what stage I'm on and what I did. And if I, as I said, if I come across anything difficult, we'll go through it. Uh, we have our mechanism here. I love these. Um, I've missed these. These are the, the traditional kind of music boxes, but this will also work the uh, the transmission transition as well. We have our metal parts over here. We have uh, an emery board so we can sand with that one. That's good. More screws. And that's it. That's what we get. Now you will notice there's no glue in here. You don't need glue for these models. You don't. Um, so you don't need to glue them. These are all push to fit. Um, but when I say push to fit, we wiggle, we ease in, we don't jam these things in because that's how you're going to break it. So you just, you take your time with this. This is something you take time and effort over, not something you just jam in and you know, try and get it to fit. Um, but let's get stage one uh, let's done and we'll take a look. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is assemble the uh, the main gear. Now I have waxed this. It advises you to wax your gears and it does come with wax. If you run out of this or you lose this, any wax is fine. You can use a beeswax um, stick or you can use a tea like candle wax is absolutely fine. But I mean, literally all I do is I go in between the teeth and I give a decent kind of rubbing of wax. So these are coated. It will just make your gears turn so much easier and smoother when this is finally done. Again, a lot of the questions I get asked are, you know, my gears aren't turning right. It's like, did you wax your gears? No, that'll be why. Um, so seriously, wax your gears. Um, it'll help you no end, believe me. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't. It makes uh, it makes no sense to me why you wouldn't wax your gears. So, right, this is what we're going to do. So we are going to take this piece here, this is the metal element. I'm going to pop this over here, line these holes up. And then we're going to take uh, a D6 here. That's going to slot just over there. And again, we're going to line the holes up. And then we're going to screw it all together. So taking the screwdriver they've given us, we use that one just to see what this is like. It appears to be magnetized as well, which helps. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put one through here first. Then I'm going to marry it through that one so we can see that we're all lining up. There we go. And then once you've got one in, this won't be a problem. All right, so let's get these screwed in. 
So I'll put two of the screws in. I'm going to take a third one here. And that's just going to go through there. And we have got to screw this one down. So again, that will over time, don't split your wood or anything, just make sure it's nice and firm. And there we are. So that will be a kind of master gear. That's the one that's going to do a lot of the uh, of the work. Um, but that's looking nice. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach this to the um, to the music box mechanism. I will show you how to do that. Okay, so taking our, uh, our transmission here, we're going to take this one and we're going to go anti-clockwise. So this will go on until you feel resistance. You don't need to overdo this. Let's get it all the way around until we feel the resistance. At the moment there's none. There we go. There we go. So it's as simple as that. Don't over tighten it. Don't try and force it or anything like that. Just that's it. That's where it needs to be. Uh, next we're going to be what appears to be a transmission box for this. So I'll get the parts together and get that assembled. Okay, so to make the transmission box, we've got D1 and we've got C11. Uh, we've got the key that we need as well. We have the three more screws. Now these are the thinner, smaller screws. So you've got six screws on the main back. Three of the fatter ones is to make the uh, the gear piece we made there. And the three smaller ones to put this together. Now what's interesting about this one is it comes with this piece. Now I've never seen this pull one of these sets, but this is an optional piece. Um, it's safer for children basically, so little fingers can't get in there. Um, I think I'm going to fit it. I think I'm going to I think I am going to fit it, um, just so anybody that is making this, you know, they uh, they can see how it's done. But it's not it's not necessary for me. But I think you know anybody that is watching, they think, well, I do want to fit that for the kids. Then fair enough, that's what we'll do. So I'm going to screw this together. This is going to go like this. Um, I'm going to get the screw together, and I'll show you uh, installing this child part. So I put two of the three screws in. I'm just going to put the third one in here. Now, if you have any problem doing this, once you've got one in, uh, it's just a case of wiggling it around on the board to line the second one up. Once you've got two in, the third one goes in easy. So, you know, just take your time. These will line up. This will all, all come together. So we're going to get that one in. And there we are. So that's now attached to the board. That's how you should now be looking. Um, right. Now, with this piece, as I said, this is... Got a bit of music on there. Uh, this is a uh, this is unusual to me because again I've, I've never seen this before where it's kind of like a child safety part. But I'm going to install it because normally I I wouldn't I don't need to, um, but I'm going to anyway because again if anyone's building it and they want to know how to do it, we can at least show you how to do it. So we took the back end sticker off there, that goes down into there like so, and that's it. Next thing we do is we're going to take the key. We are going to attach this to this part here and this is where it gets tricky because again i believe you go the opposite way we do we go anti-clockwise i think or do we go clock i can't remember we go i think we go clockwise let's let's have a let's figure it out trial and error we'll figure it out it's weird because i'm i'm used to kind of the old rule of lefty loosey righty tighty um, but I think we, we do go clockwise. We go clockwise. You'll know when you get there, because all of a sudden it's going to start winding the mechanism, which is fine, because we need to test the movement. So let's wind that one right up. So our mechanism works. Good stuff. We have some more to build onto here. So I'm going to get that done, and then we'll take a look. Okay, so here is stage one complete. So after we've built the box, these are all just pushed to fit parts. So there's, it looks like we've done a lot. We haven't, we've, we've fit like five parts to this. So one, two, three, four, oh no, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, that's it. So they just push to fit. So you just push, you start with these two pieces here, these two attached to it, then these two slot down there. So we've got the, uh, the mechanisms kind of held in there now, as you can see. And um, that's it. So that's gonna be the, the under, the under part of the carriage basically. Um, what we're moving on to now is we're going to move in, in stage two and building up the back side of this. Now this is push to fit so you don't need me to show you how to push to fit. Um, if I come across anything that seems a little tricky or anything we need to use tools for I'll check back in with you and we'll see what's there but just take your time follow the instructions read them carefully 
Um, when you're happy that you're doing the right thing, push to fit. So let's move on to stage two. Okay, so here's where we're up to so far. And again, simple enough, these pieces just slot together. Uh, we pin this one in and that's, that's kind of how we're looking. But what I wanted to show you is, we move on to part now that requires tools. Uh, and it does. So you do get tools attached to your board. So D21 is considered a tool. D17 is considered a tool as well. Um, and this is so we can uh, inst install these washers. Now these washers are ridiculously tight on rogue builds, really tight. But uh, that's a good thing because you don't want to lose washers. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our washer and place it into the center of D21 there. It's basically going to hold it in place, I hope. Uh, we're going to get this started. And then using the back end of our tool here, we're going to push down. We should hopefully, and there we go. So that goes through there like so. And you can push right down. And that's exactly how you need to be. So there we go. Now we're going to do the exact same thing with another one of these, because this needs two on here. Uh, so again, I'll push this one through. Push down. Through to here, this section over here, and we will be able to. Let me just show you what I'm doing here. It's going to line up against there, and we should be able to push straight down. So, a little fiddly, but we should be able to get there. There we go, like that, straight down. You see, that's it. So, you're left with this. That's how we do that. Now, we're going to leave this on the tool. So we're going to leave these pieces on there, because when we start to build now, uh, what we want to do is take the part we've already built and thread this through. So we can thread this through there, like so, and then that sits in there, and that's how we are. So now when you start building up, this will hold it in place, and it won't go wobbling around all over the, the, the joint. So yeah, done, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is what I meant. We've got these pieces now stacked up, still on that bottom tool, because we have our final uh, washer to put on. So we're going to place that one and get it started. Just get that held in place. Oop. I'm going to use the tool to push this one down. So let's get this pushed on. And hopefully we can push it down with the tool. There we go. Something's on. How far down do we need to go? Let's have a look what it says. Push down with the underside of the tool. Okay, so we'll, we'll, go, we'll go as far as it goes. There we go. So those are held in. So that is now how you'll now be looking. But what we've got now is a section that will turn. It's held in nicely with the, um, with the washers. And that's where we are. Looking lovely. Um, right. So that is, this is now considered as piece B. That's what that's called. Now all those pieces together, this is referred to as B, and this is referred to as A. And what we need to do is marry A to B. Uh, quite simple. So we are going this way round. Uh, I don't need the tool just right now. Uh, and this is going to slot into, let's make sure we're in the right place. Yeah, the lower slots here. So we're going to slot this one in again. Take time, to, don't force this. We're just going to, I'm just going to ease this in. So because we've got a line up three, it's not going to be the easiest thing to do, but that's why we're going to wiggle as we uh, as we do this. So let's get this one in. There we go. Make sure it's, there you go, all the way down. There we have it. So that's how we're now looking. So we're starting, you're starting to see that, <laughs> we're still playing music. You're starting to see how this is going to go. So this is the axle that's built here. Uh, and we'll start off with a lovely base. Um, next, we are going to uh, add a few more elements to this, and then we're going to start putting some decorative pieces on the back. Again, it's all pushed to fit. Uh, you're capable of doing that. We're only putting in, uh, what do we put in? We're putting in H2, uh, two H23s, an I28. Um, and then we will have this piece together as piece C. And then we're going to move on to stage three. So this is that stage complete. So this is stage two complete. Uh, we've put these uh, these little railings on there. They're looking lovely. Um, this piece here, we've got a piece underneath, which is holding the uh, 
it all together. It's looking nice already. It's already looking quite built up. For only stage two being done, but looking quite built up as it is. Uh, this is now referred to as PC. So this entire thing is now C. Uh, so stage three is going to begin. Uh, and we're making a, an individual piece that will link onto that. So let's get that done. So here we have a stage three complete. Now we've got the rear axle in there. Uh, and this all lines up. So when you push this in, your gears should now be meeting. So you can wind and test this. And your axle should be rotating. And then we have this little mouse on the back here. Let me just show you him. And this little mouse, he should go up and down. As this rotates, he should go up and down because you've got a cam underneath there that should bounce him up and down. But nice and simple so far. I mean, this is all pushed to fit. It's There's nothing challenging yet. Uh, we're moving on stage four now. Now this does include some of the elements of the kind of foldy, twisty wood. You'll see what I mean when I do them. We'll go through some of those because I know a lot of people have problems with these snapping. So I'll just show you how I do it um, to avoid kind of any any breaks. So here we go. We're going to install I9 into the section. As you can see, we have this flexi wood. Now it'll flex so much and then it'll just snap on you. That's what's going to happen. But what we're going to do is we have to get this to attach these three pins. So quite simply, we're going to start with one pin. That's it. So we get the one, and it's just a case of, as you can see as I'm doing, I'm just gently applying pressure. And then we go for the middle one. Again, I'm just rolling there to apply some pressure. And the third one, the same thing. It's just a gentle roll and a push. And so you've got it exactly where you want it to be, and then you'll have it installed. See, that's not where I want it to be because it's still protruding. So we're just gonna keep applying the pressure, wiggle and roll, wiggle and roll. There you go. It's just not about forcing it. Just don't force it. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, if you try and force this down, um, it's, it's going to snap. That's that's just the way it is. So you just apply your pressure, wiggle and roll, and that's it. There you go. you got it exactly where it needs to be. Check the other side, make sure that's good. Other side's good. That's it. So just don't force anything. It's It will all fit. Just apply a small amount of pressure, increase the pressure slightly, and wiggle. And eventually we'll just ease onto the pin. That's all you need to do. So we're going to put the other one on this side. And we're going to carry on building stage four. And then we'll uh, check back in and take a look. So here is stage four now complete. You can see we've got a seat in our stagecoach. This attaches to the back. That will firm that up. And you get this natural curvature happening there. We're going to put this away for a little bit now. Because we're going to be working on the sides of the, uh, the carriage over the next two stages. So this is now referred to as E. So this whole part now is now referred to as E. Hope that makes sense. Uh, let's move on to uh, stage five. So here is stage five complete. This is nice and easy. This is pushed to fit. You can see here we've got this pivot piece here. Again, just take your time with all of this. It's just pushed to fit. There's, you know, you don't need my advice on this one. You're just following the instructions, pushing and gently easing the pieces in. Don't force anything. And that's stage five. Let's move on. So here we are with stage six complete. Uh, you can see we've had the stagecoach signed to this. Now, there are rivets on here and silicone corks. My advice is, hold the silicone cork with some tweezers and push your rivet into it. It will go. It's a bit of a nuisance, but it will go. We've got this lovely hinged jaw that we've built here as well. So it's looking, it's looking really nice. Now, again, I haven't found anything overly complicated at this point, so I've not had to sort of break down what it is. This is all pushed to fit. If you take your time... And you push to fit, you'll be fine. If something won't fit, give it a wiggle. Make sure everything's adjusted correctly. But it's looking nice, right? It's looking ornate. I believe in stage seven, we're going to start adding this to this. We're going to start building up our carriage now. So that's the second one built. So this is easy enough. It's a repeat of what you did in the first one. So now we've got I and G, and it's time to start attaching them to the base of our carriage. So here we are. We've put our sides on. So now we've got what's looking more like a carriage. Looking lovely, right? So you can see the chairs inside. Nice and easy. Okay, let's move on to the next stage. We are building the, uh, the, the steps, uh, building these up for the undercarriage. So we've done a lot here. We've built up all this front section. So we've got the, where the, uh, I suppose the passenger would sit. Passenger? Yeah, possibly. Luggage? I don't know. I don't know stagecoaches. Uh, but it's looking nice. So that's how that's looking. Now, what I have done is the sides are on now. and We've got these ornate pieces here. I folded my steps in. So what's going to happen is your steps fold up like so. You can close the door on them, and then they can fold down. Now, I'm never going to have mine folded down. I'm always going to have mine folded up. So I've put mine in already. You can see how that looks like from the top there. Um, but it's looking, I mean, it's looking good already, and it is starting to look all nice. And now we're using the colour pieces coming into it, rather than these oranges and these yellows. It's starting to look really nice. 
Um, let's move on. So here's stage eight done. Wow, we have we done a lot. We've put this roof on here. It's looking lovely. Finished off the back piece there. The moving around. We've got this here. It's looking lovely with the whips. The driver's seat there. We've now got our uh, support in. It's looking amazing. Put these steps on. It's looking great. It's looking so good. Uh, stage nine now, and we're going to start building the wheels. So there we have our wheels on. We're nearly done. Uh, that's stage nine complete. All four wheels on. It's looking absolutely lovely. Now we're going to make it look even nicer. We're going to put decorative elements on in stage 10, 11, and 12. Uh, and then we'll be done. So let's get 10 done. We'll take a look. Okay, so we've got lamps installed now and on the other side as well. They were a bloody nightmare. So I broke two trying to do that. Fortunately, they give you lots of spares. These are really, really delicate. So take your time and go very easy. Very easy with them because they snap. Really simple. That wasn't fun. Right, on stage... Uh... 11. And here it is complete. So we built some luggage in the final stages. The other thing we also built was this stand here. So you've got something to rest on. It takes all the weight off the wheels and the axle, which is good uh, if you can be split this for a long time. But the other thing it means that you can do is that you can play this without it having to roll around. So it will run. The wheels will turn. This will run. But it means if you want this on a shelf somewhere, but you still want to enjoy the kind of music box aspect of it, you don't have got to worry about it, you know, running off or pulling it back or anything like that. So what we're going to do is I'll wind it up and I'll show you playing it on the stand and then I'll also show you it uh, playing as it moves. Gorgeous thing, really, really nice. So this is it running on the stand. It takes all the pressure off the wheels, all the pressure off the gears. So you can have it rotating. So you can play this without having to have it rolling around the floor. There we go. Now I'm gonna wind it up and we'll see it moving. Now you must forgive, because I've got a very uneven surface here covered in glue and bits, but you will see. It does run. A lovely little thing. But again, mine's going to be, I'm going to use the, uh, the step for mine. And there we have it, one absolute joy. They give you a lot of spare parts for this one as well, which is good. If you break anything, it's fantastic. But it just looks lovely. It looks stunning. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous little clockwork music box. Absolutely beautiful. Let's have a chat. So that's this one complete, and I can kind of show you exactly how big it is. It's a big old unit, you see, so this isn't a small thing. This is this has got some heft, but it is gorgeous. The detailing on this one is stunning. It's really nice. You can see even on the back there, uh, we've got a little mouse and he does bob up and down as uh, as it moves. It's, it's gorgeous, cute little touch. Uh, the stand is a brilliant idea as well because it takes all that weight off of the axle because I mean, I don't care what it is over the years if all that weight's on there, it's, it's going to cause a problem. So the fact this can stand on that and you can have the wheels rotate and enjoy the music box without having to run around, Smart, it's a smart little idea, it's a good little idea. You get a lot of spare parts, as I said, so if you do find yourself snapping or breaking any parts, like I did with those lanterns, those lanterns were were extreme, that was that was a lot, um, and they were, they were very easy. I've got big hands, uh, it was very easy to break those lanterns, so go very careful on those, but there was a lot of spare parts, but I mean, I broke two lanterns, I still had enough to build all four lanterns, which is good. And there are a ton of spare parts to this one. The only thing that really isn't spare are the wheels. You could almost build a second one out of whatever the amount of spares they give you. That's fantastic. That's really good. Um, I really enjoyed this. And it's so nice to make a clockwork one again. Because as I said, a lot of Roka's more recent models have been uh, electrical. So battery powered. So to go back to the, the basics of the clockwork is lovely. I love these little quarter music boxes. My critique of this one um, would be the, the song. I think I mean green sleeves is it is what it is, but it would have been nice to have something a little bit more old west themed. It would have been nice to have a home on the range, something like that. I think something a little bit more cowboy would have suited this a little bit more. Um but that's a, that's such a minor gripe. Um because it's beautiful as as a as a Roka model goes, this is stunning. The different colours of wood as well means that it's good to go. You could, of course, you can paint this. Um, you don't need to. The different contrasts in the wood, I think, really stand out. And it looks like an old West carriage made from wood. I think it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, you can get one for yourself in the link down below. Um, I was sent this by Roka to review. My opinion is that of my own. Did I enjoy building it? Yes, absolutely. It took, uh, I'd say, about four hours to build. I really enjoyed it. It was it was so much fun. 
And um, it, it was a throwback. It reminds me of the older Roker models, and I really, really like that. Uh, hats off to the design team at Roker because they, they nailed this one. It's really good. I want to say a big thank you to Curly for sending this out to us. Um, it's It's been so much fun. I love Roker. I, I have done for years. I mean, you can see the amount of Roker models I've got on the shelves behind me is ridiculous. I've been building these for a long time now. And um, they've got some stunning models. And they've got such a wide variety of models as well. Um, it doesn't just have to be stagecoaches. as they do, fun fair rides, they do shotgun, you can get a shotgun and a Tommy gun, um, you can get robots, you can get all, all manner of vehicles. Um, and we're actually doing one, there is a live build tomorrow night, uh, on Saturday night, we're doing a live build of the Roker Electric Guitar, so tune in for that one, that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, that's all from me. As I said, if you want one of these, you can get one in the link down below, I recommend it, it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, beautiful. Any questions? If you have any problems with this when you're building it, you can email me at buildingtheboys.hotmail.com and um, I will try to help anywhere I can. But it's it's easy enough. I mean, it is push to fit. And um, yeah, it's enjoy it. Enjoy it because it's a beautiful one. Uh, in a world where you can be anything at all, just be nice. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, we'll be back with a lot more from Building the Boys, including more rogue builds and more other wonderful weird things. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Take care and I'll see you soon.